This is the unboxing and review of the Master Grade Super Deformed Freedom Gundam. This is the first kit of a new line from Bandai. They're calling it the Master Grade SD, SD standing for Super Deformed. Now, I don't normally do Super Deformed uh, kits on in, in any of the lines of the SDs because I just I prefer to do the more realistic ones or the you know the the scaled ones and that's the thing with the SDs is that they, there isn't an established scale that they are there's just a look and feel that each one has so you could have an SD figure that is the same size as another one where the mobile suits are much larger than, you know, say like the Sazabi in SD would be the same size as the uh, Gundam, you know, RX-78-2 Gundam, which that's not real. So, but when they came out with this new line and they're making a master grade level, I had to try it. So this is the Freedom Gundam from the Seed uh, timeline. And, you know, the, the, the box has the typical cover art, which shows the mobile suit in action. It's got the uh, photos here of the model itself uh, after it's been built. These might be prototype as opposed to the true model. So they might differ slightly than what is actually uh, being built. But it does show them in different poses and the different articulations and the different effects that they have inside the kit. Now, as Bandai says right here is, MG technology has been integrated into the SD Gundam body to implement the widest range of articulation in an SD, ser SD series kit. So that's the whole goal of this. So they're not gonna be as deformed as other SD. They're gonna be just squattier than a normal kit um so there is, there is no number system for this line because it's a master grade and master grades don't have numbering systems so let's go ahead and just take a look in the box so being master grade that means that there's going to be a lot of pieces that where the color separation is based on the color of the pieces there's not going to be uh, many, if any, color correcting stickers or anything like that, uh, because everything's going to be based on, you know, the, the plastic itself snapping together. So it's going to be very detailed, like other Master Grade kits are. The nice thing is, since this is a newer one, this came out just this year, which is 2023. It came out beginning of the year. So all the runners on here are actually, uh, PS plastic, so you can panel eye and paint whatever you need to do or decide that you want to do without having to worry about whether or not what you use is going to damage the plastic underneath. So it's got multiple runners, it's got stickers, and these stickers look to be more along the line of the realistic stickers, which are thinner. Um, so the, uh, the edges don't show as much on the model. But I did, I'll talk about the stickers towards the end. So you've got your typical um, manual here, which basically goes through, and it looks like with this, at least with this model, it's, not, it's doing what is typically done top down. So starting with the head and then going to the chest and arms and so on and so forth. So it is really a typical uh, instruction sheet or instruction manual. And like the MGs do, they tell you which runners each section is working with ahead of time. So you can pull those out and have them to the side as you're working with them. There is a nice color middle insert here, which shows many of the pic pictures that were on the box itself, or photos that were on the box, but a few other ones with additional poses and stuff like that, a little bit more detail onto the different articulations and um, uh, effects that they built into it.
And then being a master grade, like I said, there are decals, so there is a marking uh, diagram in the back here, which is nice. And then on the back, you've got the front and rear view, two other little close-ups on the detail that happens here, and then you've got your painting guide if you want to do painting and such like that, which is typical of a, of a master grade. So this really needs to be thought more of a master grade kit than a SD kit because it's going to be a lot more uh, detailed, a lot more runners, as you'll see as we go through them. So we've got the runners here. We've got our beam effect, which is a typical, you know, clear colored plastic. In this case, they're red. We've got the A runner. And the one thing also with the, um, with the master grade SDs is they're looking, they're going for more of an inner frame type structure where you have an inner frame that has the armor and other things attaching to it. So there's good, there's going to be many pieces that are part of the inner frame itself. Like here, you've got this, you know, silvery gray that looks like it's the head. So it would be the inner frame of the head and stuff like that. You've got your white head and armor pieces. Looks like this is the shield. And as you can see, they're really kind of more squatty than ultra deformed. The head's going to be a little bit bigger, which is typical of an SD kit. Of an SD, I'm sorry, an SD model. And so we've got our, you know, white pieces, some metallic plastic looking. Looks like they're a little bit coated with a metallic effect on there. And then some, your yellow for your fins and such. And then we have a couple of B runners, which are basically just, yeah, these are the same. And these are more uh, armor pieces. It looks like there might be some fin pieces on here and probably like leg or arms, stuff like that. Things that can be easily duplicated. We have here our C runners. And these are two. There's a C1 and a C2. They seem to be locked a little bit together here, so... Huh. Okay, there we go. Um, it doesn't look like there's any... Oh, there's a little bit of duplication. Looks like... Yeah, that, that part here is duplicated in the middle, and then a the couple end pieces here. And these are just your red pieces. We have this light gray. So, like I said, there's going to be much more color separation with the color of the plastic. We have a dark gray here. These are our E-runners. And it looks like we have... These are inner frame pieces and then weapons. We've got some more inner frame with the F-runner. And it looks like the F runner is duplicated, so those must be like arms and legs and stuff like that. Things that are going to be mirror images or the same pieces, except for small little individual things. Um, here's our G runner. This looks like it's more fins and probably more backpack pieces and such like that. We have another clear plastic here, which is a blue with a little bit of. The way the uh, plastic is, is shaped, there's a little bit of uh, um, diamond type effect in there. And this is G2, so it looks like it's more runners and other dark gray plastic. And then we have a couple of blue pieces, which is your typical color. Um, you know, and so, you know, this is going to follow more along the lines of your typical Gundam colors, maybe a little bit different shades, but your, your, your white, blue, yellow, and red with some darker inner frame and stuff like that. So, but like I said, you know, SD kits normally do not have this many, you know, this is probably two to three times more runners than you would normally get on your most complex SD kit out there. So we did... We do have the stickers that come with the kit, but I much prefer to work with water slide decals 
So what I did is I did get some third-party decals, and I got Delphi, which is a good um, third-party. It's one of the top two third-party non-Bandai water slide it's available out there. So I did get these to work with those because, like I said, I just much prefer to work with um, water slide decals. They're just easier to work with for me. But like I said, the decals that come with it appear to be more along the line of the real grade stickers, the realistic stickers that they call them because they do seem that they feel more satiny and they do seem to be a lot thinner than your standard uh, stickers that come with a kit. So that's about it. Now the good thing is is that it, it, this this kit did do really good in sales. So they've already announced the the second Master Grade SD kit, which is going to be the Barbatos. So I'm excited to get that, and hopefully if that does well, they'll do a third one, and hopefully we'll get something like the Ariel or maybe the Zeta or something like that. So. It looks like this line is, is going to continue for uh, at least the, the near future. So that's good to know. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you for the next one. So what we've got here is the very first kit where Bandai decided to combine the aspects of both Master Grade and Super Deformed. And I've got to say they did an amazing job. This is a beautiful kit, a pleasure to put together. I think the outcome of it is, because I've never been a fan of Super Deformed so much, it's just not my, my cup of tea. Um, I have nothing really against him. I, I just don't think, I prefer the more realistic mobile suit looking, you know, models. You know, whether that's high grade, master grade, full mechanics, or real grade. I, I enjoy that type of, of, of kit to, to show on my display shelf and stuff like that. But when, when I first heard that a master grade super deformed was being developed and was going to be released. I pre-ordered it and I am not disappointed in what I received. Now this is a bit quite a bit more expensive if you're used to um, doing um, super deform, which are normally you know say eight to twelve dollars or so US. Um, but even though this was in this was more of like an expensive master grade, maybe a Vraka type price point you're looking at. I think this was like around forty-five, fifty dollars US. But I am not I didn't overpay. This model is that good. First of all, this model has more pieces than any other model I've ever put together, including real grades I've put together. There are so many pieces, but they fit so beautifully. The color separation is just absolutely amazing. Um, they don't have the various shades like you get in a real grade, but that doesn't matter. Um, it, it helps that this mobile suit happens to be from my favorite series, Seed. And this is the Freedom Gundam, which is a great suit in the anime. Um, but, you know, just the number of pieces that go into the backpack for the wings, I'll, I'll expand those later on, is, is more than you get in most, you know, high grades and such, uh, let alone a super deformed. I know, I know that even though I don't build them, I do know there's maybe three, maybe four at most runners in them and they're you know fairly small runners so this is not necessarily right out of the box now i did do panel lining um i did cover it with a 
clear coat just to preserve the the painting and the um actually not not really painting the only painting really is the panel lines and instead of using the included uh stickers i got water slide stickers instead and used those because i just personally prefer working with water slide stickers now these are the stickers that come with it and they're 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 satiny and thinner like a real grade realistic stickers that they do with the real grade so hopefully this is the type of sticker that uh, bandai is looking to move forward with because these are much thinner so the edges show a lot less and you can use like a softener on it to help even show even less whereas you know the the really the the older stickers that are much thicker uh stickers themselves it seems like no matter how much softener you put on there it never really reduces the you know the, the edging that you see so the, the, these are nice but like i said i just prefer working with the um water slides so these are these are the exact same you know images and details from the stickers just as water slide instead so um this suit has really cool features in that one thing I just want to point out immediately is that well that's why these things aren't going together so well. Um basically there are a you know the arms, these part of the of the wing, the way the wing attaches to the um the backpack, the way the wings attach to each other, and other places throughout the model, they use basically like a lock key system or a lock tab system. As you can see right there, there's that little tab right there at the top of the peg. And what happens is the area where it goes into has a notch in the, you know, it, around the peg, whether it's deep or not, or just shallow, depends on the type of piece. So you need, when you put it in, you need to make sure that you align this little nub. It's not a nub, really. It's, it's, it's an intentional little tab with the slot that's in the piece where you're supposed to go at. You slide it in and then you turn it so that it, it locks that piece on there. And that's the way the arms are put on. Like I said, this piece right here, um, it goes right in. As you can see, there's the little slot right there. So you just put it in right there and you turn it and that's not coming out at all. Um, so, I mean, th this model is just rock solid because of that you don't have to worry about whether you know you move the arms too much and the shoulder comes apart or anything like that just have to turn this one you know turn this one around because and i'll explain why that was turned around the wrong other way um but you know it's the only, the only places that it doesn't really happen is there's a there's a no there's a there's a standard ball joint for the ankle there's standard ball joints for the uh, where the legs attach and the hip. And there's the standard just normal peg for the waist to be attached to the upper body. And there's a ball joint in the head to put that on there to allow the motion and stuff like that. But everywhere else, when you have a peg joining something, it's that lock. And even these, these small wings and stuff like that have a the way that they attach to each other is a tab and and slot mechanism to make it lock in so i hope that like i said i hope bandai decides that that's the way to do it and moves forward with those types of things because i we've all probably had kits that we've put together and constantly have especially in the case where this here has essentially a, a floating shoulder. It's just the peg goes through in a um, an oval cutout to attach the shoulder piece here and keep it attached to the body. But because of the locking mechanism, this doesn't move at all either. So 
and this is always a, a, a kind of a problem when you have that type, this type of uh, attachment for the shoulders because the shoulders are constantly wiggling and shaky and stuff like that. They're not very solid. Now, um, some other nice things is that, you know, I mean, the backpack, when I get to the movement and the articulation, I'll, I'll explain how the backpack work, uh, uh, goes, uh, fans out for the wings. But you can just take it take it off. Now, one, one negative thing about it is this is a, um, this this is not a backpack attachment that's compatible with possibly other ones. I I've never built one like this. Maybe other kits do have this square type backpack attachment. I'm used to basically the the two or three peg type thing. But hopefully, what they're going to do. When, when they do more uh, master grade uh, super deformed is they'll stick to this type of backpack attachment for them all so the backpacks will be interchangeable um, at least be, be within this line and like I said this is the very first one and uh, luckily this one did very very well sales wise because they've already announced the next one which will be the Barbatos and I've already pre-ordered that and I don't expect it to be any less fun to build or great to look at. Um, I do expect there to be fewer pieces because the Barbatos doesn't have a huge backpack, but I don't think it'll be any less valuable, you know, have less value for it um, than this. And hopefully if the Barbatos does well, they'll continue with it and I'd like to see an aerial or something like that come out because that, that would probably be the next one. I think the Barbatos came out first because... I believe there's a new prequel and uh, manga that came out, so they might have been trying to promote that because there's a couple new mobile suits in the um, Iron Blooded Orphans uh, uh, timeline that's that are coming out, and I believe it's a prequel. I think it explains basically the Calamity War and stuff like that. So, um, so anyway, so this has. Before I get to the articulation, this has so many gimmicks. Uh, it, it's it's at, it's really incredible how many gimmicks this thing has. Right here, it's got these these little thrusters, and yes, the, if you notice, it's got well one the little side bits can come up, and and it kind of makes it look like a little. Um, core fighter is not, but it does make it look like a little core fighter on there. But another thing that happens is this little blue thruster, if you push this down, it opens up the hatch here so that any uh, vapor can escape and it'll close back up as well. Um, here we have the side skirt, which this is the rail gun. And if you notice, as I'm moving this, that this piece goes out. And this eventually just comes straight up. And this is the rail gun. And there is, where is it? Oh, here it is. There's a handle here on the rail gun. So you can just have... There you go. Much better going out the other way. And so you can have him just hold on to the handle and manipulate the rail guns. Like that. And, it, and it's the same on both sides. They both work the same way. Now, as you see me manipulate these, you might be saying, Oh, no. They have real grade slash, um, no, early real grade slash master grade articulated fingers. And yes, they do. They got the thumb, they've got the index finger, and then the other three fingers all together. However, the good news is, is that Bandai figured out how to make these work without falling off all the time. 
Because as you know, when you manipulate these types of hands with other models, the pieces are constantly coming apart. The way they did it is that the back of the hand is designed in such a way that once you put all the fingers and thumb into the specific uh, holder for the ball joint and you put this on, the back of the hand keeps everything together and doesn't allow the fingers to come out or the ball joints to be stressed enough to come out. Now, sometimes it does happen with the thumb every once in a while. Um, it will happen like if I'm trying to re if I was trying to get something in there because maybe I put the, the shield on and then I had to manipulate the holder in here. Sometimes the, the, the thumb would pop out if I did it at an extreme angle. But that's okay. You just pop it right back in without taking the back of the hand off. Because normally that, that won't happen in normal, uh, you know, manipulating it in normal ways. So, there's that. Um, it's got your, see, it's got your typical, you know, skirts and stuff like that. It's got a single back skirt that moves. Um, and, you know, even the back parts here, they, they come up like wings as well. Now, let's see here. Okay. So, now, one, one, one negative thing about this, and it's not a huge negative because there's ways you can, you can adjust for it, but it stands up nicely on its own. But as soon as you put this huge backpack on it, it's super back heavy. So, you know, when I first started this video, it was sitting here with this on the back, but I had to really get it in the right angle, the feet in the right position. You know, in any slight difference, it would have fallen backwards. Now, the one thing is that I've noticed that if, if everything is in the back or whatever, you can, you can angle it so that essentially the tips of the wings are going to hold everything up properly. And if you have it in the fan, uh, and I'll show that when I go through the articulation, if you have it in the fan to the side um, position, then what I've been doing is I just expand these out right here and I use that, use these as a support and it, everything holds up fine. Otherwise that, you know, it's just going to fall backwards. That's the only negative. Now, if you're doing it on a stand, you don't need to worry about it. Um, but, you know, everything, like I said, is rock solid. So let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories. Obviously the backpack is a huge accessory and I will go over this more with the articulation. And the other accessories you get is you get your basic beam rifle. And this fits into the hand right there with that little tab. There's, you know, similar to what you get with real grade. Let's see here, trying to get it. There we go. That little tab fits right into the palm of the hand, similar to what happens with real grades and master grades and stuff like that. The nice thing is, is that this will fit in there and um, there's no like, you know, palm ridge that prevents it from going in like I've encountered on early real grades. This moves back and forth so you can hold on with the other hand. Now, because of the fact that this has a tab built in and it's not one of those ones that are recessed so you can pull them out either way, this only fits in the right hand. But that's okay because you've also got a shield and this only fits on the right arm, <laughs> just the way it's uh, designed. Or at least the only way it looks good is on the right arm because of, you know, I guess you could take this out and switch it if you want to put it on the left arm instead because they both do have the mechanism to do it. Um, but you can't put the gun in there. So if you wanted this to be in over here instead, if you want it in the right arm, so you could hold, you know, it does come with your beam, beam swords. And if you wanted to hold one there. And what how you do this is that there's 
in the elbow right here, there's a little slot right there. And that's what that, that fits into, this part right here. And then once that's in, then you can move, you know, you can twist and get this, or you can, you know, or you can put that in first and bring it around. Sometimes it's easier to just put the shoulder or the elbow tab in first. In fact, most times it's easier to do that. You know, the, the head has the, um, you know, the glowing eyes. I don't know if you can see this or not. I, want, I hope you can. The amount of detail in the, yeah, that is the head, the inner core of the head is, is a silver coated, you know, piece. And the details of the eyes and other things on that, on these silver coated pieces is amazing. They pop out all over. Like here on the head, that's what the, the Vulcan cannons are. That's what the, you can see the silver there in the cheek vents. That's also from that. Um, here on the back, no, I'm sorry, that's, there's some, I don't remember where else the detail was. There's a couple of, oh, that's right, the chest. That's what these things are coming from, the chest. So any place where you see silver showing these, these Vulcan cannons here, are because are part of the um, the silver coated plastic and and you know I, I was when I was putting this together I was kind of disappointed that the th those pieces were not under gated because but the way that they're gated is it's all on the connection piece so wherever because you know w with coated plastic wherever you have to remove the nub you're going to see the plastic that's underneath the coating and in this case it's black plastic. But not only was it in all the connected pieces is where they, you know, where the gate was for the plastic to inject in, but it was, they're also covered by armor pieces and other inner frame pieces. So they never show. The only thing that ever shows is what's supposed to show, which is the, you know, through the, through the eyes and through the other pieces and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it you don't have to worry about that if you get to the silver pieces going, oh no, this is going to be terrible. They're going to, sh this is going to look terrible. Don't worry about it. It's not going to look terrible. It's going to look great when it's done because no place where the gates are show on the model once it's done. Um, like I said, there are two uh, beam rifle, rifle, I'm sorry, <laughs> beam swords. Um, and this has that little tab there like the gun. And they fit into the palm the same way. Each one, each hand has the little slot that these go into. And the other nice thing about it is you can make this into a double-ended beam rifle. I'm I don't know why I keep on wanting to say rifle, but uh, beam sword. So you can make just an extra long one and just have it held by one of the hands. So you can do that. Now, one nice little thing also is that the uh, beam sword handles actually are stored right here on the little hip uh, flare, uh, you know, uh, the, where the uh, rail guns are attached. And the way that this happens is there is, there we go, let's see if I can, there you go. There's a little slot right there. This plaque piece is normally like that. You just push it out a little bit. You make sure the front of the handle, the place part where the beam fits into, is in front. You make sure that the uh, the, the nib for the holding onto it is there. Sometimes you have to turn this a little bit. And then, oops. Oh, okay, that's. And then once you have it in there, you know you have it in right because it'll just snap 
this, you close, okay, you close this and it just holds it right in there as solid as can be once you get it in there. It can be a little bit awkward, unfortunately, the, I'll, I'll say this about the arms first, there's a, there's a little shoulder flare here, and because there's the gut, there's the, um, oh, I get, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I could move that up. Okay, that's not a problem anymore. <laughs> Forget what I was about to say. I've got something new to talk about in articulation. <laughs> okay. Um, so, but th those are the only accessories that come with it. The shield, the uh, beam rifle, and the beam swords. So, but, I, you know, I think that's quite a bit for a, if you think of it as a super deformed, then that's quite a few. If you think about it as a master grade, it's not as many as you normally would get because you only get the one set of hands. But I think everything that I put together in here was very well planned. Everything, there, there's no excess that you need. And I don't think you're really missing anything that you would actually have to need, mostly because they figured out how to make the articulated hands work. And I hope that this is something that the uh, that Bandai applies to other things that try to use articulated hands. I don't know if they'd be able to be as successful with the smaller fingers and the smaller backing and stuff like that, but I certainly hope they're trying it because I, I have become so frustrated with the real grade models just because of those articulated hands and the, the way that the other hands are. You can't, you can't hold on to anything unless you use the articulated hand, especially with the earlier ones. So it, it can be, you know, I just hope that they, there, there's so many things that I think they were incredibly innovative with because it, it seems like they just kind of started with a clean sheet of paper and said, hey, this is what we want to accomplish. Do it the best way. Take everything you've learned doing master grade models and super deformed models and let's come up with a process and a standard that includes the best of both and that's what they have here so let, let's go ahead and go into the articulation here uh, you've got your your skirts that move up this is separated in the front there's a single one that moves back and forth in the back uh, you know these side little pieces move out a little bit at a little angle and then they twist as well. You know, that you can almost go all the way around, not quite. Um, with the head, they have a mechanism besides the, uh, they have a little joint here so that you can actually move the head further back. Um, it can turn 180, uh, 360 degrees. It can go forward somewhat. Basically, you're stopped by the little chin nib here, but that that's that's the head. The waist, you can turn pretty much all the way around if you wanted to, but a lot of things would start getting in the way. There is some crunch, and there's even an extra joint to allow the crunch to go even further. And then once that joint is activated going forward, you can even go back further. And then you just kind of get everything back in place. Um, the arms, as I discovered while trying to point out a disadvantage of the arms, this actually goes up to get out of the way of this little shoulder shield, which if that didn't happen, then this would get in the way and you couldn't move the arm up. But now you can go at least to 90 degrees. You can't go any higher just because that gets in the way, but that's okay. Um, you turn this, this turns here, 360. The shoulder does not turn all the way around. I guess it can, but this is a case where you have the shoulder, you know, the arm is attached via a, a one of those, you know, tab and lock type thing. So if you were to turn this all the way around, then it would line up the the tab and, and the slot and they could be pulled out so probably not a good idea to do that um it's got a little bit more than 90 degree angle for the um for the for the elbow and of course the hand can turn however you want or the wrist i'm sorry and then you've got your thumb your 
three fingers together in your index finger manipulation, you know, movement for the um, for the hand. And, and they can't go as far back as maybe some articulated hands just because of the fact that they're preventing the, you know, if they, if they went that far back, then they wouldn't be able to prevent the uh, ball joints from coming apart, you know, popping out every time you move the hand, fingers. The other arm is exactly the same way. Oh, and you can turn, you can spin the shoulder all the way around together, and it basically moves the entire unit um, together. So you, you can you can reach up if you need to. You're just going to move the shoulder armor as well. For the legs, the articulation is fairly well good. It can come all the almost all the way up. The, the the skirt does get in the way somewhat. It does have the typical, you know, um, ninety to, uh, full, one eighty, two joint system here to to bring it, uh, I guess it's 90, really, um, to bring it apart. There is some slight separation to show um, under frame. There's some more silver that shows. Sorry about that. Um, so, and then you can just, when, you, when you're putting it together, when you're putting it back together, you just want to make sure you're not going to get the, um, the skirt caught in there. You're not going to damage anything as long as you're, but, you know, it's like many times when there's the separation. Let's just put that there. <laughs> um, there, it, you know, you, you normally you would get the hip together. There we go. Get the hip together and then the rest. And this little, this little thing right here, as you manipulate the knee, that pushes down and back and stuff like that. So that's a neat little detail. There's the typical ball joint. You can you can move it slightly. You can't go all the way around just because of the, the ankle uh, armor right here. You can crunch the toes and you know the heel and in the, the toes together about like that. You can even make this go up a bit more. And that's the same for both of them. And the hips can go out at a 90 degree. And there, there, there's some turn. I mean, I guess if you go all the way out to the side, if you do it the right angle, I guess you could. Okay, yes, you can spin at the top of the leg. It does spin all the way around. And that's about it. I mean, I've already explained this artic how this moves as part of the effect of the, uh, you know, the... Uh, um, the effects that it has. Oh, one thing I should also mention is this is compatible with basically any stand that has a uh, three millimeter peg. The way to get it on there is at the on the backpack. You push. You. Oh, there you go. Right here. There we go. Right there on the back, there's this little part right here. That moves. There are these two little pieces here. You just make sure you don't grab those when you pull them down. This seems to be having trouble focusing on the, on the black. But you pull this down, and in here, there's the hole that the peg fits into. So it just has to go straight in. So if you have, if you have the stand like this, you just stick it in just like that. And it fits right in there. And then that goes on the back. It took me a little while to figure out how that worked because it doesn't show you this at the end of the manual it's buried in the manual um, as part of the uh, backpack assembly so there's like this one little tiny square at the bottom of the assembly there that says here's how the base attaches 
and of course it's you know it's you know action base number blah blah with you know five with you know the standard 13 attachment and but it doesn't really show a lot of detail it's just one image showing it in there and uh but anyway so that's how that goes together so let's go ahead and take a look at this backpack because one of the beautiful things about the freedom gundam is the backpack how it can spread out and essentially be pointy wings so the way that this works is you essentially and we can look at it from the back as well is the idea being is that you know these these two bigger parts just kind of separate at about a almost a 90 degree angle not quite a 90 degree angle you know this is like I said, this is from the back, maybe more like a 60 degree angle, a little bit more. And then these little tiny wings show on each side. So that's what it looks like when you look at it from the back. And this is what it looks like when you look at it from the front. So, and both sides do the exact same thing. You know, and these they, they spin here at the uh, at the joint right here. These move back and forth. Actually, I guess it would just be back because if this is on the if this is on the mobile suit, then you certainly can't bring them forward. But the one thing to note with the, this little joint system right there is that it's actually the way it's put together is there you know. There's a, there's a peg that goes through this piece here, and then this attaches to, to keep them together. And what that allows is, if you, can, if you can see on there, it's textured. There's these little indents there. So when this moves, you can, you can hear it kind of snap. Not so much snap, but just kind of, you know, feel pressure into those slots. Um, so that you can, you know, so it, it'll hold things together. So, and then of course on this right here, this is where everything's joined in there. These can move independently. This can move independently through that joint, you know, and this does the same thing. And then also one nice thing is that this right here, is actually designed as short shoulder cannons. These are shoulder cannons. So you just kind of push this up and then oops, you turn it so that the black part is on top. And then these can go over the shoulders of the mobile suit right here. So that is really nice. Or you know you can have them pointing straight up, or I guess if if you if you move the if you move the wing, you can have it point to the side as well. It can be shooting off to the side instead. You you can go all the way to a ninety degree angle, which is nice. I mean it, it's a nice little touch, so. Alrighty, so that's pretty much it for this kit. When you when, when you fold them in, just make sure that the essentially when you fold that back, the black parts at the bottom like that, because they're this shape right here fits right in to where you know all the wing comes together. But I mean, I, I am incredibly happy and incredibly impressed with how well Bandai did with this this entirely new type of mo of kit, this entirely new line. And like I said, it must have taken off pretty well because they've already announced the second kit they're going to do with this, which is the Barbatos, which is coming out at the end of the year. I believe it's going to ship in December. So, and and, and I've already pre-ordered it. So. Um, 
once that comes in, I will go ahead and um, build that one as, all, as well. And I've got to say, you know, I was excited about doing this one, and it came in maybe about two months ago. I think it was, you know, just after winter type of thing, maybe, you know, May, not May, April. Um, so I had some other ones that I wanted to do first. So I had this on my shelf and I'm like, listen, this is going to be the next one. And when I, when I was taking the pieces off the runners and cleaning them like I normally do, just taking the pieces off and seeing what was there, I couldn't wait to put this thing together. I knew this was going to be a great build just because the way the pieces were that I was taking off the runners and the detail on them and just, it, I, I was... I was so excited I could say I was giddy about putting this together, and I was not disappointed. It was as fun as I thought it would be. It's a beautiful piece. Um, no, this has not made me want to go out and get other types of super deformed, but I will absolutely be a customer for all the master grade super informed, uh, deformed um, kits because it's just it, it's above everything else in super deformed. And, and as I, you know, I would say, you know, w when thinking about this, if you want to build it, you know, think of it as more of a master grade than a super deformed, because that's how much time investment it's going to be. Um, that's how much detail and, and some more that is going to be on it. And uh, the amount of pieces and everything like that, the number of, you know, decals that are on it and you know they're just all over the place and very well positioned um so overall i'm, I'm actually gonna give this an s tier um as a grade because one i can't imagine you know w with this complex of a mobile suit them doing being this successful on the very first one um i've got a believe that this is going to be better than any other one unless they start doing a whole bunch of seed <laughs> with massive mobile uh you know uh backpacks and stuff like that not that there's going to be less quality on the other ones just that the complexity is going to be a lot less like the barbatos you know the bar i put the together the hg barbatos and it's not as complex as as it looks um once it's completed it's it's a beautiful build, but it's it's not going to be as complex as this. So I've got to give this an S tier, even though it's the very first one. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope uh, this review helped you decide whether you want to actually try out this. I would highly recommend this to anybody. Um, I would say as long as you've done a couple of kits and have got the idea of, of how these go together. I've never done an actual master grade before. I have a bunch of them. I just haven't gotten to them. So this really is the first master grade quote unquote that I've done. And, you know, but I put together a lot of HGs, a lot of real grade stuff like that. And this was very easy. In fact, easier to put together than many of the real grades I've done. Cause I've done mostly early ones, but, um, I, I highly recommend this for anybody, especially if you're a seed fan. And like I said, do not think of this as a super deformed. If you're not into super deformed, don't dismiss it. Think of this as a master grade and you will not be disappointed, I promise. So thank you for watching and I will see you for the next one. Thank you for watching this video right to the end. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That does help out the channel. If you would like notifications as to when new videos are posted to this channel, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, what I have done is I have set up a Google Calendar to show my build schedule. So if you're interested in finding out what I'm building and when, please do subscribe to that. The link is up here. If you do have time, please do enjoy one of the videos that are popping up around my head.